Hey everyone, Jonathan Silva here, bringing you another video working with Microsoft's Power Automate. For this one, what I like to focus on is finding a way to extract a random value from a list of items. What I like to do in this case is, and this is a conversation I have with my wife just about every single day, is what should we have for dinner? We have a whole list of things that we like or the rotating meals that we have, but we can never come up with you know, a decision. It's like, I don't mind, what do you want? I don't care, what do you want? Well, what I've tried to do is come up with a way to have that choice taken out of our hands and automatically done for us. And what I'm gonna do is use Power Automate to get us there. So here you have it. This is the table of dinner choices that I've put together. These are just some of the things that we like to have in my family just kind of on a rotating basis. So I just made a quick little table, a list of just one column here to display all of them. And what I'd like to do is create a flow with Power Automate to randomly choose one of these items whenever I go ahead and set this flow to, to start off with. We can either set this on a schedule if we want, maybe send me an email with this information every morning so I know what to get ready for for that evening, or we could just do it on demand with an instant cloud flow. But either way, what we're gonna try to do is get this list to be populating for us and extract a random selection each and every single time we run the flow. So here's our list, let's go and get the flow. So I'm gonna go over to my flow here and we can get this process started. As you can see, I already have two steps ready to go. The first is for us to manually trigger in this case, so just go ahead and do a on demand. The second is to go ahead and list the rows present in that table. Okay, I've just pointed to the table itself, what am I gonna eat? And the next step for us is to go ahead and set up a way to have a random selection. Now in order to do that, we're gonna use the compose data operation. Compose is fantastic to be able to you know, set up an output based upon whatever you wanna input through it. In this case, our inputs into the compose, we are going to use an expression in order to set up a way to randomly scroll through or assign one of these values here as we go through. So we're gonna to come to our expression. And the expression we want to use here is to be able to access the entire body of the table that we are working with. So that's from this list rows present in table. So we could start off with body, okay? There's our first one. We wanna access the entire body that is available. So if I now go into my dynamic content, I can choose the value list of items to pass through, to take the entire array through here. And what you can do is just remove where we have our outputs, because we don't need that because we're not looking as an output from the previous step. We're just actually using the data that is present there. And what we can also do is come on over here and remove where we have the body. Because we are using the body expression, we no longer need that within our um, dynamic content here. And now what we can do is come over here and access how we are going to randomly select one of those values from the list itself. So this is where we're gonna use a square bracket to move to the next series of or options we're gonna use from the table and we can use the rand expression. Okay, what rand is gonna allow us to do is to randomly pull out those values that we wanna see. Okay, so now when we do our rand, the first parameter here, and it's not showing up for mine right now, but as you go through your expression here, the first parameter is going to be, um, you know, how many are we going to pull? The integer of items that we want to select. So we're gonna do one. The next parameter in this, as we go through our comma, is, okay, that's the starting value. We wanna pull one value from, okay, this, the total that we have. So we want to pick an, a random number between one, there's our starting value, and what is the final value. Well, we don't wanna put in an integer here and say we're stopping at, say, 22, because maybe this list changes over time, and to think about other situations that this might be useful for. So instead, what we wanna do is 
end with the full length of the table that we are working with, of the body of that table. So here is where we're gonna pass through our length expression. And for the length expression, we are gonna pass through the body, okay, of the actual table itself. Now, in order to reference back to the table, we can come back in here and just copy out this table reference right here. So list rows present in table. So I'll just do a control C. I had that copied and now I could pass that through my body. Okay, so there it is. Now that we have that available, we're just gonna essentially now point to the value here, the individual values of the that we have for the entire body. So we can also capture our question mark and value here as well. That is referencing the individual value, the individual items um, within each uh, part of that table. So now we can come on over, we can pass that here as well. And we are just about done. The only thing we need to do is we can actually get rid of this final closing parentheses. If I were to hit okay right now, we would likely get an error because if we look at the parentheses available, I'm just gonna pass, take a step through here. We have one for our body and it's closing there. Okay, and then we have, let's see, another one here. So it's open, one open, two open, three open, one close. So we still have two open, one, two. There we have it, our closing parentheses there. So we can get rid of the final one just like that. All right, so we can then hit okay. So now what we're doing, this is composing the random selection. So I'm gonna add that in here as my, um, my title of the step here. And now if I wanted to see the output of this, I could save this or you can test it by you know, sending an email. Like what are we actually receiving when we run this? So I can add in a new step here to send myself an email. And I'll do it with Office 365 Outlook. I'll send it to myself here. And we'll put in our subject. Uh, we could say what? we are eating for dinner tonight. And the meal or the, the meal is and now we can pass through our compose what we're able to get for our random selection and I'll put in a little bit of exclamation maybe I'll make this a little bit bold as well so we can see that really easy let's save it and test it and let's see what we get so once it saves I'm gonna come over here and select test and there is our run there it is so we can see in our compose we saw oh carbonara that's the today's dinner selection let's see what the email looks like and in my email this is what we are getting now what you can see here is ooh, it gives us the actual selection itself but it's also passing through all this other information because remember from the compose what is providing us is the random selection from the list it's getting all of the data that's been tagged with it not just the individual value in that cell so what we need to do is find a way to extract just this last piece here in order to pass through now the way to do that is you could take a look at the output from our previous selection here from our compose excuse me and if you see the output from the compose, you can see right here that this output is in a JSON array. Okay, so it's an array format written in JSON. We have three objects that are passed through, and those are the three objects we saw within the email itself. So what we need to do is be able to parse out just the one single object here and just use that as the dynamic content we want within the actual email itself. Well, luckily for us, we do have the ability here, if we come back and hit edit, to insert a step before we send the email to parse out that JSON. 
Now, actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and copy out the output from there because we want to be able to pass through this output. So we come here and copy that out. And then we can come back here, select edit because we need to be able to use that output here. We can now insert in our parse JSON date operation. There it is. And the content that we want to pass in to parse out is you would imagine, yeah, okay, we wanna pass through the entire table here to be able to select the individual values. Well, that's not quite accurate because that's not going to get you down to the selected uh, array that you want to parse out. What we need to do is pass in the output from the compose here within our content. So we're gonna come in and there's our outputs from the compose. Now in our schema, we can select generate from sample and paste in our sample. And once you hit done, you can see that now we're able to see the individual objects that we can pull through. And if we come into our send an email and take a look from our parse JSON, instead of the outputs that we have from our compose, again, from our parse JSON, we now have the three objects that we had that, when we, that we created from the compose to be able to utilize within the email. So there it is, today's dinner. And that'll be the only thing that is now passed through. So I can make that bold just as we had before. And one last save and test. And we should now be able to see our random choice and only the actual name of the dish itself. So we can come here and test. We'll do a manual test and run the flow. And let's see it. Do I have another one? Yes, we do. There it is. There's our meal is barbecue chicken. We could try it again. Let's see if we get a different result this time. I'll just do a, another quick manual test. Let's see what else we get. And there it goes once more. Let's see. Here is another one. Oh, that one's chicken tikka masala. Right, so we can continue to do this. We'd even do one more time for the sake of you know our threes here for the random selections. We could see that we'll have three different options. And again, it's all randomly selected each and every time. And boom, this time, sesame crusted tuna steak. Not bad, one of my favorites there. So we have all of them available here within the three emails that we have. You could just line them up side by side. There's our choices. We've run this now three different times and we have three different selections. That's the randomness that we want. So each time we run this flow, it'll point to a very different item and we can have all that decision making taken from us. Now, what are some other ways that we could use this? Well, think about this for yourself. What if you have uh, a sweepstakes you wanna do internally with the office? What if you have um, a sweepstakes for your customers and you know the selected customer from our list that it's all randomized, you could just run it straight through Power Automate, take it out of your hands and boom, everything is done for you. The email's all set. All of the, the work that you wanna have is right there in front of you, all right? Definitely take a look at how we can continue to use Power Automate to make our lives easier, this time using the RAND expression, parsing JSON, some of the great features that we do have here with Power Automate to do everything we need, just make it easier, faster, more efficient. Mm -hmm.